My Hero Academia, Season 7, Episode 16. Everything has gone horribly wrong. Himiko Toga, what is it that you desire? I want to kill Hawks, then slaughter every other hero. <laughs> is that all? <laughs> what a way to phrase that. Just a little bit. That's a reckoning for Hawks. Thanks, Dobby. Thank you. That was sweet. Thank you. Let's for that. continue his march of despair. That's a lot of twice. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's terrible. It's awful. As if it wasn't hard enough already. But it's okay. Endeavor is coming, and he's at full HP. We won't have shroom to move, much less fight. Right? Like they don't even need to really do anything. It's just you smother. It's all right. All you need to do is find the real Toga. How hard can it be? I think there's only one thing that can save us from Toga now, and that's a heart to heart with Uraraka. It's the only way. And all Uraraka has to do is find the. <laughs> The right one. They don't have a hive mind, right? So you would have to find the actual Toga. Or just talk really, really loud across all of Japan. Also, side note, I haven't mentioned this, I don't think, this arc, but I've been thinking it a lot. I love the way they're scoring it. I'm not the most musically oriented person, but it feels to me like there's a lot of new stuff. Like they're specifically composing for this arc. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not you oh there she is! With Su and To. Do you know which one is the real Toga? Oh, she hurled her in there, yeah. Oh, she's a true hero. I mean, she's all the way there. There's no question at this point. Oh, you, you exposed yourself. <laughs> I'm not some hopeless lovesick girl anymore. Uh, she wants it though. If she didn't, she wouldn't have done that or said that. One person yeah, has the best girl makes come back. That's you. That's her. <laughs> I think Meryl has one of the most powerful quirks we've seen so far in the show. Getting people to care about the weather. Suddenly, Americans everywhere care deeply about weather at 12 a.m. For the butterfly metaphor, it's one of those things you hear, I would say, pretty often. But like this show, I feel, really deserves it. It earns it. Because it's so intricate and detailed about the way things track and how things start and where they go and why they happen. Which is why I think the, the resolutions, the individual running thread lines, and also just the points along the journey resonate so heavily. This show is the best example I can think of right now. Where you see the villains and you realize they're terrible, but you're like, uh, yeah, I understand how we got here and there were a lot of mistakes made in just oh so many ways all might leave it all to me don't worry society you can turn out i'm here endeavors i will make my kids powerful at any cost in my opinion hawks killing twice because it was the best way to prevent mass damage and on and on and on and connected this image though all the twice is surrounded by dobby's flames Get behind me. what do you even do these fires are keeping me from spreading my spores around oh i had high that would have been such a good plot line. All this time I've been waiting to see Mushroom Girl murder people. That would have been such a major payoff. Oh well, I still have hope. Move the captured villains to safety. If we leave them, they'll burn. Very heroic, imagine. We have to deal with Dobby too. The worry Endeavor's coming, he has full HP. Rafi! Okay, all right. Okay, strength in numbers. I went toe to toe with the demon lord earlier. She did and she lived. And she had words. What do we do? Where do we even begin? That's not gonna do it. You're not gonna punch them all one by one. This wasn't part of the plan. You're not thinking, Endeavor. What did you do to Shoto? Where is he? I want to right. bring you his Even worse is what Shoto did to him. But he was too strong. Oh, he's just gone. Look at him. He has nothing to lose. He's dead anyway. I'll take advantage of the chaos. And of course you will. As well. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, Hawks. Even with a new army and a younger body, you seem to be in a hell of a hurry. Looks like you don't have much faith in Shigaraki. How astute of you. <laughs> you got him talking. Mission accomplished. Get him to talk about, like, chess pieces. Bait him into talking about how much of a genius he is because he's just waiting. He's just waiting for any opportunity. And it's weird. It's not even like insecurity. It's not even like he's triggered. It's just that he enjoys hearing his own voice about how great he is. Though I will say, especially recently, I've come to actually appreciate how much of a genius he actually is because of the level of insight. Now it feels like a lot more than just, I'll move this person over here and this person over here and I'll get this quirk and that quirk, but actually something deeply fundamentally important about human nature and society. He has a very interesting critique. He's the rare kind of genius that has insight and also acts out that genius. Anybody can have what seems like insight. Like applying it to a world to get what you want is a whole different matter. And the guy loves what he does. I mean, I think that's actually maybe why he loves talking about it. He's a fan of his work. He found the right pursuit in life, unfortunately. I think one way to look at it is that he really understands 
purpose. He understands its power. He understands people need it. He understands that a lot of people don't have it and our vessel's waiting to be given it. He can see who's hungriest for it and he understands how to give it. That itself, that knowledge seems to have gone much farther and done more damage than any of his quirks. That's correct. He's still not complete. Yes, tell me more about sense. your chess pieces. There's a reason he still needs this version of me. Oh, he's planning on taking him over. <laughs> Let's face it, the plan has split everyone up, fell apart! Stop individually punching them. You were already beaten by our number one hero once today. He's not abandoning anything. How pedantic. <laughs> Why was that so cutting, you pet ant? Oh my god, I can't believe this is happening. This is such a long time coming. Whoa. This time, I'll watch you. Wow. Wow. The chain thus far. Talk about narrative threads coming together. It's so tragic and so perfect at the same time that this is finally the time where Endeavor can understand, but it's so far gone at this point. What makes me really sad about Dobby, but also by the same token hopeful, is that it feels like he's still looking for the same thing. He's still looking for Endeavor's love. He just doesn't think he can get it. What this makes me think of from experience, there are some people I've come across in my life who had a very common experience having that hard crash of putting everything into maybe a parental figure or some authority figure and getting burned. Being a really good, loving, trusted kid and giving 100% of yourself and your faith and having the floor suddenly pulled out from under you to the point where you're shocked into thinking like, oh, I just can't trust anything. That's another sad thing. Often it comes from genuine sweetness or they're exposed to a very typical environment that fosters learned helplessness where there's like a severing of cause and effect between I do something good and I get something good back so I can get to know the structure and I feel safe knowing that there is a structure and I have something to believe in and I have something like a path and then experiencing what I actually think is really important. Uh, there's more about me and my choices here than I thought. I can't be a blind follower. I think it goes really well when you have kind of a dual path where you are aware that you need to develop some kind of independence of self and thought while also easing into it and feeling like you are loved and you have some structure in the meantime. I say all that to say at the extreme end, you come across people sometimes who actually are sweet at heart, but they've learned the wrong lesson. What they've learned is affection, love, care is not something I can ever expect. Instead, everyone I encounter is simultaneously a threat and something I need to navigate. I need to manage to get what I need out of it. Care is not something exchanged through good faith. It's something to be evoked through pushing people's buttons. I just need to find where the strings are, and when I want something, I pull the string. And also, because this is all a game of people using each other, I cannot let my strings be pulled. What's really sad about people like this is that even when someone comes along who actually does really love them, they can't trust it. Automatically, anything that they receive, they feel must come at a cost to them. So they distance themselves from people that really actually do care about them. This person can't love me. They're using me. And I can't get love with this person, so they're someone to be used. I'm thinking of a very specific person in my life, and this person would have like glimmers of like just real sweetness and beauty. And then I would see her like catch herself and pull back and then there would be a punishment that followed always inevitably you got too close and now i must like re-establish the feeling of control i have because if i don't control things i will get destroyed like i have in the past combine that with a sort of conflation between attention and love and you get kids and adults who are antagonizing and pushing and trying to find the limits and walls of people so that somebody will finally be stable enough and strong enough to like catch them and give them the love and stability that they've been missing their whole lives though of course the effect is that just pushes people away no one wants to deal with it it makes me sad because i think at the core of it was something really sweet it was like initial faith and trust that got burned. I say all that to say, I haven't totally given up on Dobby yet. Uh, what? Yamada. You're not gonna like this. We're gonna need a lot more eyes. Yeah, and Shigaraki just got full power. You did your best, Monoma. You did great. What is he, what is, what is he hatching? What the hell? He's hatching. Well, so much for... Well, actually, it's exactly a coffin in the sky. What about the barrier? Save your babies. Keep it online. This is Mandalay. The flight system stopped working. We're going down. We're just out in the world now. Meet your doom, heroes! You. It's not just the heroes playing supporting roles. No extras. I'm afraid the worst this is it. in history is free. It's fully unleashed. If we fail here, Japan... No, the whole world. The whole world will crumble in this monster's hands. There's no second chances. It's this or nothing. Tell me. I'll be your friend. Your first. That, that isn't body. your dog. Want to have another little chat at the mall? God, that's a throwback. That's crazy. You know exactly who I am. Your villain. <gasps> Speaking of people who want something, they're not admitting. Shigaraki talking.
Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, of course, this is another way more extreme than life example of something that is very commonly found in life, which is people will argue to defeat themselves. People will viciously defend the ways that they themselves are doomed. And I think in some level, maybe it's a similar thing. You're in over your head, you're compromised from the inside out. Your logical structures have been corrupted and you can't reason yourself out of it. And so you're trying to push as far out as you can. You're trying to attack so that you hit something stronger than you that allows you to like grab on and hold on outside of your decayed outlook so that you can rebuild something that you actually really want. It's really difficult though, because it's like you're chasing someone into a subjective hole. Anything you try to provide will get filtered through what is already the reasoning that has led them to this place that they don't like. And it will deliberately loop itself back into confirming itself. I don't know how common this experience is, but I know I'm not alone in this. Have you ever just like been in a state where you have momentum of complaining to someone that ends up in a debate with someone who actually is trying to help you? And then you're just really good at articulating and logicizing your arguments. And so you win and the other person's like fatigued and like, okay, I, there's nothing I can do. And then you're like, what just happened? I didn't defeat the other person. I actually defeated myself. And you know you're wrong, but you can't let that come to the surface. The only hope being that that sentiment that something has gone wrong starts to ascend into some awareness of what's going on. Separately, for reasons that are hard to explain, I feel like Deku's not equipped for this yet. He might be equipped to fight Shigaraki, though he feels even underleveled for that. I don't know what it is. There's still something the heroes aren't getting. There's something that All for One understands that Deku doesn't. It's what led to all this. Deku has to be what I was describing, that unmovable solid wall that also has just like pure loving intentions and that's really difficult right now. I mean I think maybe part of it is that he'd have to actually see it for what it is fully in a way that you, like strips the, the emotion away from it. Their underground evac system is already in my hands. Okay, all right, all right, you've already won. Great, happy for you. If we end up crashing this hard, now your Rosso and the others below are dead. Oh right, they're underneath. I can't breathe. Why? This is not the time for this. This is not good. I can't take in enough oxygen. Me after a two kilometer run. It seems like they're having a hard time staying unified. One for all. Okay, maybe he's not ready for it either. Still resonating, so we can look inside each other. This is the best edge that you have. About time you showed yourself. I admit you're pretty good at this. Bisky? But you were never going to hide from me for very long. Because Whoa! I, you well, I oh I got I forgot her name. Lava Lava, G uh, gentle heroes, girl, friend, Labrava. Speaking of the school festival arc and how much I miss that. Oh yeah, she's a hacker. Tell Deku that you love him while you're at it. I hope this somehow leads to gentle criminal having immunity if the world survives. This is giving me some serious deja vu. Right? <laughs> Look at these excessive functions and ridiculous uh, I'll match. <laughs> My blah blah blah. My don't say that word. <laughs> don't ever, don't mention it. It's like the ring. It's a curse that spreads when people watch it. Uh, that's pretty mild tryptophobia, at least. At least it's not Rob Rice Titan. Our projections show it'll hit the mainland. Aiba, you have to fix this. Yeah, people, heroes just have to do so much more work. Leave it to my babies. What's done is done. But not everyone has help. a lost cause. Yeah, right. I mean, looking at things relatively, <laughs> she's not really that bad. You just don't understand. The fact that you don't get it is why we have heroes and villains. That's kind of what I'm saying, yeah. I, I can feel that palpably. Are you, are you seeing this? He's slowly bouncing his way over there. It's up to you, Toby Top. She loves everyone. Love everyone. That's gentle. Wow, he got a, this quickly. My wishes have come true so fast. Slowly. It, it looks I great. It looks amazing. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. No, no thread. Unused. Oh, it's perfect timing too. This is so relevant to what's happening now with Deku and his understanding of villains. Well, I was really not expecting Gentle and the Brava this episode. God, that's a throwback. My absolute favorite Yaptuber, my inspiration, and also someone who is like way too close to home for me. Given a chance to be significant, what he always wanted. Hopefully he doesn't accidentally kill a hero. <laughs> that would just be the end. Well, now the Brava can give him, give him her love, which is probably deeper than ever now that he's reformed and grown out that Facial hair. Mmm. And that is how you do Oh, my all-time favorite hero. From my all-time favorite episode. Just what do you think you're doing? No. You mustn't. Wow, please. this is a flashback. Wow, gentle. I made an error and took the wrong path. Then didn't have the courage to stop. This is an uphill battle. I want to become someone who can show them a bright future! Oh yeah, I felt that too. Seven prisons were broken into, but this is the only wow. single escapee. Well, here's freedom right there. 
I hope. What is it that you want? Would it be safe to say that his quirk has all the properties of rubber and gum? <laughs> so cool. So much more honed in than before. I love General Criminal. I've always loved General Criminal. I think this cool festival arc is just a masterpiece start to finish. I really miss those days. It's been a while, but if I recall correctly, he had a major chip on his shoulder and was worried about his significance and his legacy and, and being known, being acknowledged. Which, I mean, actually, is not that dissimilar from what I was speaking about earlier. Where, like, there's just something you want and you don't know how to get it. And you, you start lashing out in just strange ways. Or you, you go in very odd directions that are not even actually going to get you the things you're looking for. You're off target. And he was worried about his capability and some insecurity about the fact that he just bumbled so many things and his warped to takeaway towards the solution was, well, I'm just going to prove to everyone how capable and significant I am. But like, he wasn't yet, you know, like, you got to start brick by brick. And I think that maybe looks like just scaling back and doing the things that are remote and in your grasp really well. Like, why don't you try to perfect those things first? Why don't you try to handle your basic life first? Get your relationships and your finances in order before you save the world and become a yap tube inspiration. Though I'm not sure I have the legs to stand on with that one. Everything I say about General Criminal ends up being a self-own somehow. But it feels right to me that his takeaway is, actually, my goal is I want to be there for the woman I love. Earlier today, and I can't even remember why, I guess it's because two of my friends recently had babies. I was thinking, you know, probably the best thing anyone could do ever in life is just like be really good to their kids. Like just really make your kids' lives great and like really love them and take care of them. You want to sacrifice yourself for some global cause? Or just put that energy into your family and like see how far that goes. Nobody wants to hear you yapping. <laughs> Go talk to your family. I thought I'd be satisfied if I could just stay at your side forever. Oh, he's so perfect for this. And he's not going to flub it this time and no hero's going to die. It's true what they say. Double voiceover. Makes the heart grow fonder. Also, what she did should not be underestimated. Being honest with him. That's real love. Way back then. Oh, yes! Tenel becoming what he always dreamed, and not for the attention. And it's Deku's influence. And it's what Deku needs right now also. Still fighting for the sake of someone else's smile. That's exactly what he will be doing. My intentions were noble and pure. They were. It just, it just weren't, weren't ready. And now you are. And I let him hear. A trampoline. Deku knows. <gasps> you gave him that chance, and it's time to do it again. Help. It's you. I'm so glad they get to make eye contact. God. <laughs> His body is back in action. Let Gentle Criminal do his thing. The second that hand touches the ground, we're finished. <gasps> Whoa, everyone's coming back. I thought she was... No, she didn't die. This is critical. This is this is exactly what Deku needs right now. Remember what we're fighting for. It's not for our side. We need to look inside their hearts. At their origins. Yeah. Oh, out of the hospital. Still bandaged up. Oh my god, that was so amazing. This show has such a way of getting me. Like, it's always the worst episodes when things are going terribly that I feel the most inspired. It's weird. I think because the darkness allows the light to shine the brightest. The way the characters answer these challenges, you remember. That's what it is. I can't ever hope to explain it with all my yapping, but it's like a concept turned into a diamond. It's interesting that that even came to mind, that I was thinking Deku is, is, doesn't feel perfectly calibrated for Shigaraki right now, which is understandable given the severity of the situation, the danger, the fact that his friends are likely dying, the fact that from Deku's perspective, Bakugo may be dead. And Deku's always been there, but it's been a lot, you know, season six, season seven. He's knocked off course a little bit. How perfect is it that there are people there to support him and pick him back up when he's exactly the person that did that for them, which is a very common thing in the show. I mean, I think that's even what happened with General Criminal and the Brava. General Criminal was the one that pulled the Brava out of her state of despair, and ultimately the Brava growing from that, and then being that source of strength for him. Also, and not to harp on this, and also I don't really even think too judgmentally about it. I understand it. But if you think about it, it's the opposite of Hawks. And Deku's treatment of the villains, and Hawks' treatment of the villains, led to diagonally opposite results. Shigaraki, for all that he is, for all of his destructive power, for all he's telling you he's just a destructive force and wants to kill everyone, and telling you to give up, and telling you that he's evil, he's also a lost child. We as the audience have a lot of benefit of having seen his backstory. It's up to Deku to find that on his own. In the middle of like the most difficult battle ever fought, it is heroic 
psychedelic work. It's so easy and so common. Instead of really looking at what something is, instead of really suspending judgment and going really deep into something, which probably would reveal one's own flaws, it feels like so much of discourse and treatment of people looks like having a template of categorical boxes and looking at someone and trying to quickly sort them into the convenient box. Like, oh, you're a this. Here you go in that box. I've seen this one before. This is not really about heroes and villains anymore. That's too convenient. It's too easy. In some ways, it's a curse. I mean, I think it ties very directly into what all for one was saying about villains are the ones who violate. This is yet another way where the heroes have to do more work. They gotta actually pause and think. They have to find a way to act with conviction while also being aware that they're fallible, that there are things beyond what they can understand immediately, that even the people that are threatening you are human and were once children, that attempting to simplify and over categorize things and put things in neat little boxes doesn't speak as much to the truth as it does to one's own fear. Also, speaking of categories accounting for time, you look at your past mistakes and you're like, well, I've grown. But you think about someone else and the mistakes they made five years ago, like they're this unchanging entity where you can destroy someone's life for something they said 10 years ago when like you don't want to be held accountable for things you said 10 years ago. You don't want to be accountable for things you said last week, you know? You won't want to be held accountable next year for things you said this year. But rarely is that courtesy extended to others. I just made a mistake, but I've learned and grown over the past 24 hours. But you, evil, just evil, disgusting. Thing. I mean, that categorization and that thinking also robs people of this very thing, you know? Time is such a crazy thing. It doesn't have to be with major mistakes. I mean, it could be with anything, anything painful. If you turn a corner on it and you have some grand victory, something that really makes you feel amazing, you unlock like a piece of yourself that you always knew was there. You get that sensation and you trace a thread back to things in the past that were excruciatingly painful. The whole perspective and light on those things changes. Obviously, the deeper you go into doing terrible things, the harder that is to stomach, but nevertheless, the potential is always there. And it's difficult and uncomfortable to think about, but the terrible things people have done cannot be undone. So isn't the best case scenario for them to do great things in the future? That's oversimplifying it. There's a lot of other things to consider, but I think it's important to at least play with the complexity of it. And Deku is now doing that in real time with the most dangerous man to ever live once he catches his breath.